joined now by someone who will be patrolling the sidelines on Sunday <laughs> when the Bills and Steelers square off. Doing the game on CBS, it's NFL on CBS sideline reporter Tracy Wilson. will be here with Jim Nance and Tony Romo. Tracy, thanks for joining us. Uh, Got to be happy when you see Buffalo in early to mid-October on the schedule. <laughs> I am, I am. How are we looking in terms of weather on Sunday? Pretty good. High Perfect. 50s, you know, the trees are already turning. High so. 50s, calm and sunny. It should be absolutely spectacular. The trees are starting to turn. It's going to be bra- It's going to be great, Tracy. You're going to love it. I pr- trust I us. I can't wait. Trust I can't us. wait. I'm, yeah, I'm, it'll be good. I'm so excited to get back to Buffalo. What is the what is the CBS point of view about this game? Yeah, I mean, I think we see what everyone else sees, right? I mean, 14-point uh, underdogs for Steelers coming in on the road in a tough environment with a rookie quarterback. Um, but I kind of like, after reading a lot about Kenny Pickett and watching some of him, I love his moxie. I love his attitude. I love his confidence. He's been in the position before. Uh, Granted, it was college, but made his first start against number two undefeated Miami when he was with Pittsburgh and and won and won that game. And so I don't think he's going to I think he's going to come in, you know, raring to go trying to prove something. Uh, I just don't know if the if Pittsburgh has enough pieces. I mean, certainly we're seeing a lot of injuries on both sides of the ball um, for both teams. So I think that's going to play into it a little bit, too. But it, certainly a tough environment, as we all know, playing in Buffalo. I don't know that have you I don't know that you've done a Pittsburgh game this year. I don't think you have. Correct. Nope. 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 What, have not. The, the thing we have heard is exactly what you said about Kenny Pickett. He seems to not only is he a good football player, no question, but he seems to have some sort of it factor, some some charisma that when he steps into the huddle, they're they're playing hard for a young guy who hasn't really done anything in the league yet, but he does have some sort of it factor that has made him quite attractive to Pittsburgh fans and, you know, kind of invigorated a roster that doesn't that needed to be invigorated. Is that the take you get as well? Yeah, I totally believe that. I mean, I think it was interesting, you know, last week he had, you know, zero reps with the first team and then he's getting thrown out there against the Jets. So now he's going to have a week of practice with that first team. It seems like you can tell from everything we've read and we're going to get a chance to talk to Pittsburgh and Mike Tomlin and Kenny Pickett and Matt Canada, uh, who has history with Pickett. Um, you know, that they believe in him. And, you know, I don't know if they wanted it to go to this point, you know, if they wanted to throw him in there after um, a bad half by Trubisky or I guess a bad four and a half games. But I think, you know, what they're really looking for is a spark is that's what they've said. And I think he could provide that. If anything else, they certainly needed to change something up, get something going. I thought one of the most interesting stats I read is that they have not had a touchdown from the wide receiver position yet this season, which is pretty incredible to think. And they certainly do have talent on that side of the ball. So um, we'll, we'll see how this offense changes. I know you're always looking for connections between the two teams in your role, Tracy. And we heard Kenny mention in his press conference yesterday, he was very quick to reference his two former college teammates who are going to be going against him on the defensive side of the ball and Dane Jackson and DeMar Hamlin. So <laughs> who's got the edge there? They know they know him. He knows them. It's going to be interesting to see that play out in the passing game. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we know until we get out there, certainly. But, of course, they're going to be sharing information with Buffalo, and he's going to be sharing information with Pittsburgh. That's just how it is. I think the other ironic thing is that Trubisky was going to be playing against Buffalo and then gets that kind of taken away from him. I know he really wanted that opportunity. And my thought process is he just gets benched. You know, is he going to be sharing the information? Like how readily available is he going to make that? Or is he just going to be that great team player? Um, I'm sure he'll be a great team player. But still, there are many ties, as you said, between these two teams. And how do you expect um, this to – Pittsburgh never goes into a game double-digit double, point, double digit underdogs. It's the ultimate trump card for Mike Tomlin to play to a roster that, you know, they've been up against it. Um, absolutely he's going to say that, and they're going to use that to their advantage. But this is also a Bills team that's at home on a 1 o'clock on a beautiful day, and they can sling it around. This is a game that, that really – Kenny Pickett, I mean, you pick a spot that is hard to get thrown into, this is it. 
Yeah, and I think, you know, Buffalo is ready to get kind of back to that dominating football we saw the first two weeks of the season. And certainly last week in Baltimore in terrible conditions um, to start that game was not what they wanted. But, you know, to come back and win it uh, says something about this team. I mean, I said it from the beginning, you know, they're a really difficult, difficult team to beat, uh, you know, from Josh Allen to this defense. I'd like to see them run the ball a little bit more, not with Josh Allen, uh, because it's a long season. You want him to stay healthy. But I do think, you know, the Bills are just really a, a tough team to beat to begin with. And as you mentioned, on the road with a rookie quarterback, very banged up on their defensive side of the ball. I mean, if you look at their their injuries right now, they could be without their top four starters in the secondary. Yeah, That's a lot of trouble going against Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs in this offense. Yeah, and the right. Bills have experienced that too, as you know, Tracy, um, which yeah. kind of makes me a little curious. You know, we suffer from Bills myopia here, and <laughs> after the Dolphins' loss – and all of the injuries that the team had sustained at that point, there was a natural curiosity here as to whether or not the luster had kind of come off or the bloom had come off the rose on the Bills going into the season. What is kind of the national perspective on this team after, you know, a very trying loss in Miami and a nail-biting win in Baltimore? I still think that they're one of the mm -hmm. top teams to beat in the AFC. I don't think that luster has gone off at all. It's really difficult to go undefeated in this league. Um, I, we only have one team right now undefeated, uh, and especially in the AFC. And so I think the, um, the rhetoric out there right now is they are the team to beat, along with maybe Kansas City, and we're going to have that game next week, yeah. that rematch that we can't wait for. So if Buffalo can get through this one, if the Chiefs can get through their game and we can wind up um, playing that one out next week for still, you know, of course, it's early in the season, but there's a lot of kind of bragging rights as to who is the leader in the clubhouse in the AFC. Uh, we certainly are going to see that. So um, I think, like I said, I think the opinion, the national opinion still is it's really difficult to beat this Buffalo Bills team with Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, all the weapons around, and certainly this defense, even not at 100 percent. And you assume they are going to get healthy. So um, I think it's a tough out. You were on the sidelines for the Kansas City Bills game, the playoff game last year that so much was made about in the offseason. Uh, you know, the 13 seconds and the game, the way it went and the, and the incredible last five minutes of regulation by both clubs offensively and the clamor to change the playoff rules because of games <laughs> like that. I mean, it was crazy. What now you, when you sit down with Sean McDermott and, and the coordinators, and you've probably had some conversations with Brandon Bean as well. What do you, how much of a difference does the culture make for the, how the, the team I, don't, I mean, the attitude, the vibe around the team, just that intangible stuff that Sean McDermott has obviously brought to the Bills that makes them different. Is Do you see that on your side of the of the ledger as you have meetings with these guys and, and walk around and talk to the coaches and players? I do. Uh, I mean, I say it all the time, whether I actually did a, a, a speech for the University of Michigan for their team as they – they went to kick off their season, and I use the Bills as an example, and I use the Chiefs as an example, and teams that I stand on the sideline, and I watch these teams, you know, every game for four hours, let's say, and I get to talk to them, as you mentioned, you know, in meetings and really get to know the players and coaches that make up these teams, and you can tell when a team has an it factor. You really can, and it sure, certainly it stems from the head coach, and then it goes on to the quarterback, and then it goes on to these offenses and defenses and how they work and special teams and how they work as a team. And they're all selfless in their pursuit, but they're selfish as a team in terms of wanting to win. And I think you see that no doubt with the Buffalo Bills and it's why it's translated onto the field. Now, let me tell you one other thing though, by the way, going about that game right before that game, I said to Josh Allen, I said, you know, you have this win streak when it comes to coin tosses. And I said, you haven't lost one. And then he, he basically, if you go back and look, he blamed me for losing <laughs> that coin toss and in well the overtime. He, and well, he should have. <laughs> 
And don't, well, he should yeah. have. You Let, absolutely are responsible for that lost coin don't, toss. Don't be that person again, Tracy. What please. are you doing, Tracy? You should know better. <laughs> you should know better. You yeah. of all people. I think Bills fans are asking you, please don't be that person again. I don't know if we could take that, that again. broadcasting jinx. You know, That's we hear right. it all the time. He's made 24 straight field goals. Right. Yes. And then all of a sudden he misses it. But no, I am keeping my mouth shut. All right, Tracy, well, see, travel safely. It's great to see you. We'll look for you this weekend. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.